Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the worst guns for women, okay? And this is not the worst guns, this is just the worst guns for women, particularly. Uh, and I'm coming at this from the perspective of having trained thousands of women. And, and not, we're not talking about one or two or three thousand women, but literally thousands of women over the, I guess, 12 years that I have been doing this, okay? So absolutely the worst guns for women the ones that is as hardest for them to shoot is a revolver okay uh any revolver is just hard for them to shoot uh unless it's maybe a a, a single action revolver uh in which case that's not a great choice for self-defense because once you cock that hammer back you basically got a hair trigger okay so uh, as you can see here, I've got many revolvers. So I don't think there's anybody out there that can possibly say I, I'm a revolver hater, right? I have literally have thousands and thousands of dollars invested in revolvers. Uh, these aren't even all the revolvers I have, right? Because I don't keep everything in one place over here. Uh, I've got lots of revolvers, right? I've got, here you go, 500 Smith & Wesson, okay? Lots of revolvers. Cap and ball revolvers, right? Keep one... A cap and ball revolver loaded that I sometimes walk through the woods with, okay? Uh, I really like it. It's stylish. I get to practice every day, so I'm really good at shooting these guns, okay? Um, the typical woman will typically show up with a revolver that's like, th that's something like this. Small, five-shot, 38 special. Uh, and what happens is when these women go into the gun store, they go into the gun store thinking that the smallest gun is going to be the easiest one for them to shoot uh, and the gun store knows this the gun store knows what they're thinking the gun store is in it to basically they, they want to give the lady what she wants right so if she thinks that she's going to get a small gun and she's going to be happy with it they're going to sell her a small gun okay so what happens is women show up with these tiny little revolvers uh, and the thing with these guns is like when you look at it, yeah, it looks pretty simple. All you got to do is drop the cartridges in, uh, squeeze the trigger, right? Uh, th but this is what I usually see with women shooting revolvers, okay? So they're going to hold the gun. First of all, they don't even hold the gun like this. They usually try to do some weird thing like that. But that's fine. That's a training issue, right? So we teach them how to hold the gun, line up the sights, and this is what they will typically do. Because the trigger pull is so hard for women that as they're squeezing the trigger, they're moving the sights all over the place, okay? Um, so these are the hardest guns for women to shoot because the trigger pull is so difficult, okay? Now, you can cock this back, in which case you have a very light pull, but for a self-defense situation, you should not do that because if you cock this back, now you're on a hair trigger. I mean, it's it, now it's too easy for this gun to fire, okay? So the revolver, okay, uh, ideally for a self-defense type of situation, sh should be a double action only, okay? Uh, because that, that hard trigger pull that hard trigger pull is part of the safety mechanism. Now, when I carry, let's say, um, I don't do it often, but when I used to sometimes carry a, a, a cap and ball revolver, single action, okay, for me, the the it's a two-step process, right? You have to cock, right? At the point that I commit to cocking the gun, I have pretty much committed to pulling the trigger, okay? So it's a two-step process, cocking the gun, and pulling the trigger and of course with the with the with the cap and ball revolver you point it up as you cock it so that the caps fall out you also put your finger in the trigger guard right because as you're cocking this if your finger is not in the trigger guard pressing forward uh the revolver can fall out of your hand and this is how this gun was designed to be used because typically what you're doing is you're holding the gun in this hand you're steering the horse with the other hand so you have to be able to work this gun one-handed okay uh so there's there's definitely difficulties with this gun, but uh, we're not, we're not going too far off track. this is the typical gun that I see women a lot of times buy because they think that this is going to be an easy gun. And this turns out to be the most difficult gun to shoot. Now, it, it's easy to load, right? Loading this is easy. Uh, so, I mean, is there a place in the world for this? Here's the thing for a woman or just a, or man or anybody in general who who's going to buy a gun and with the intention of never ever 
uh, going to the gun range and practicing with the gun. Uh, never ever, uh, you know, getting any instruction on it, okay? Uh, so if you plan to just buy this gun, you know, having never shot a gun before, load it up, close it, you know, put it in a drawer somewhere. I mean, yeah, this gun is probably going to be easier to shoot, at least, because basically, it's you know, the gun is not dependent on the recoil to cycle, okay? So it's, it's less likely to jam the gun. However, they're not going to be able to aim the gun. Uh, they're probably not going to be able to hit anything, uh, you know, past, I don't know, three or four feet, five feet. So basically at grappling range, uh, because they're not going to be able to aim the gun. And again, when I watch people, even men sometimes, when they shoot this gun, what they're doing is that, okay? Um, so the reason why we're having this discussion today is I ran into a lady that I, I, I knew from a couple of years ago, um, and you know, she asked me what I, what, you know, what I, what I'm doing with myself, right? Because at the time that she knew me, I, she knew me through a different business that I had at the time, um, and I told her, you know, I, I spend a lot of my time doing gun instruction because I enjoy it; it's fun. And she said, oh, you know, I, I could use some, some, uh, you know, some instruction. I have a. She goes, she told me she's got a revolver. Uh, she goes, you know, I shoot this revolver, right? Uh, you know, I, I aim here and the bullets go over there. And I told her, it's because you got the wrong gun. You got the hardest possible gun that you could possibly shoot. And she's like, what, what do you think I should get? She's like, I told her, listen, you need to get an AR-15, right? And she's like, AR-15, you mean like those military guns that they that they use to kill all the people? And the, it, it, you know, I'm like, no, 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 no. It's it, the best gun is the best gun. Okay, it does not matter that some crazy person design, decides to use it for some ill purpose, okay? You know, just because that person's crazy doesn't necessarily mean that he's stupid, okay? He's going to use the best gun that he can possibly use, right? He's not going to use a revolver, which is difficult to use. He's going to use an easy gun. So likewise, you should you should shoot the easiest gun as well. So the thing with uh, semi-automatic uh, guns in general is you have to invest time in learning how to set up the gun right there's a setup process you know the process of you know uh, first you gotta learn the op just the basic operation of the gun what all the buttons do for example the uh, safeties etc uh then you have to learn to load the gun right uh, you know uh if uh, on an ar you know you gotta be able to get comfortable with taking the safety off okay um so all this stuff is done in preparation in advance right all the all the loading stuff is done in advance. At the point where you need to shoot the gun, all you have to concern yourself with is flipping that safety off. So I tell people, it's just like starting a motorcycle. You just kickstart the safety, you put your dot on target, and you pull the trigger. And when you're done pulling the trigger, you put your safety back on. Okay, so really easy to shoot. It takes, it takes some effort to get used to the gun as far as setting it up, right? You got, first of all, you got to zero the optics. That's not something that you have to do, let's say, with a revolver. Now, here's the thing. Take something like this, for example, okay? Yeah, it's got iron sights that you don't need to set up. But here's the thing. At, at night, you're not going to see those iron sights, okay? You can't see those iron sights on these revolvers. Um, you know, and, I, you know, I, I... Do I have any that have glow in the dark? Here's a, like, it's not glow in the dark. It's got like a little red color there, but still, even at night, it, it's really hard to see that. Okay, um, I, I have trained lots of people. Red dots work the best, especially for people that don't shoot often. Okay, uh, you need a red dot, something like this, like this Hollow Sun that's solar powered with a battery backup that you can basically just just leave on. Okay, and then you can expect that it's going to work when you pick up the gun, okay? And then just the very basic drills that I run people through. You know, once I teach them how to load the gun and all that, at the point that they, that they need to use the gun for self-defense, all they got to do is bring the gun up, get the down on target, safety off, boom, come down, right? Come up, safety off, safety back on. So that is the basic exercise, okay? Um... And on any AR-15, regardless of caliber, whether it's a 9mm, 5.56, 223, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, even if it's an AK, whatever, right? When I put people on rifles that have red dots, they all hit the target, okay? They all hit the target uh, very easily out to 30 yards, and in many, most cases, they can go well beyond that. But at 30 yards, which is where those rims are over there, they can easily hit the targets. I give... 
even even a lot of guys that have been shooting for years, I give them a gun like this, and as they're pulling the trigger, they're, they're all over the place. They, they can't even hit the targets over here at, at 10 yards. Forget about 30 yards over there. You know, with, with, with a rifle, you know, anybody I put on this gun, I put 10-year-old kids on this gun, they're hitting, they're easily hitting those targets over there at 30 yards. Any gun range they're training with, they're easily hitting the targets at 30 yards, okay? Um, and, I, and I explained to this woman, you know, it's very important that you hit the things that you want to hit and not hit the things that you don't want to hit, right? Because in your example, where you're telling me that when you're pulling the trigger, the, the you know, you're, 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 you're aiming here, the bullet's going over there, you know, that's a potentially uh, dangerous situation. The bullets have to go where you want them to go, okay? So for most women, revolvers are terrible guns. They don't have the finger strength to be able to pull the trigger and keep the sights on target. Not all women, there's plenty of women that I've trained that can do it, but they are in the minority, okay? Most women cannot easily shoot revolvers. Now, with the semi-automatic pistols, if they have a light trigger pull or a decent one, like a Glock or a Glock light gun, uh, they can usually learn to shoot that pretty well. They still shoot the rifle much better. And if I try to do, if I try to put them under any type of stress, even with a semi-automatic, what I find is as soon as they come out, they're like this, they're like that. They, they, they don't have a sense of where the gun is pointed, right? Just because the hands are so close together, okay? With the, with the rifle on the other hand, because your hands are further apart, you got a better sense of where your, where your arms are pointed, okay? So I, all, what I tell people is take this part over here, right? You know, when you grab the gun, take your thumb, right? And basically put that at the belt line. And the, and it, that will usually that will usually put the dot on the target. Okay, so even if I just throw my my arm underneath my target over there, right, at what would be the belt line? Throw this underneath the belt line. That's going to be on the target. So even if the dot's not working, I'm still going to hit the target because my hands are further apart and I have a better sense of where the gun is pointed right you know where my arm you've been doing it all your life right you just point your arm at the target you know you're used to pointing at things you just you know if your hands are together this becomes a problem okay so that's the that's i just wanted to share that experience and again the reason why i, I have talked about this in the past but i ran into this nice lady that again i haven't known for i haven't known i haven't seen from from for several years and uh, we got into this conversation and, and, and yeah, and she had the mindset that, you know, because, you know, she's not a gun person. She just listens to the news and she hears scary black gun kills innocent people. And she's like, oh, no, I don't want to have anything to do with that. But that's the gun that's going to save your life. OK, not not those guns, you know, this gun over here, because it is the easiest gun to shoot. So that's one of the things I, I try to explain to, to, to women. And always when I train women, right, even if they tell me that they're interested in, let's say, just, you know, getting a concealed carry permit, carrying a pistol, I will always bring along a 9mm AR, and I will always have them shoot that first, you know, so that they can see how how easy it, hits, it is to hit the targets. And, and also it makes it makes training them on the pistol easier afterwards because they have a sense of what they're trying to do uh so 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 i always i always put people uh, women especially but in general when i train people i always put them on a rifle first uh you know once they so that they understand what they're supposed to do and how it's supposed to work and then when they get on the pistol you know uh they at least they have like a a, a goal right the, the, a goal to like where they're trying to get to you know so uh, but anyway, I just want to share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.